hallelujah. Grab the hand with a spirit of expectation. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, the only, the only reason why things are regular, normal, and mediocre is because we make them that way. The Bible says, to the pure, all things are pure. He said that your hope and your expectation shall not be cut off. So with a spirit of expectation, let's pray together in this sanctuary. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I give you praise, glory, and honor. Father, I thank you for this day that you have made. Father, I thank you, Father, for the, for the acceleration and the culmination of what you've been doing in our lives. From the very first day that we heard you call our name. Yes. Father, I thank you, Father, that you are the author and finisher of our faith, that you are continually perfecting the things that concern us. I thank you, Father, that what was what was last year is no more. Father, what was 10 years ago is no more. Father, but we are in the present truth, Father. So I thank you, Father, for what you are doing, Father, right now, for what, for what you have prepared for us. I thank you, Father, for the restoration of years that were lost. But I thank you for purpose, vision, Father, and the grace to be driven into your greater graces, Father. I thank you for it now in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hallelujah. And after you love on the person on your right and left, amen, you can have your seats in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, Prophet Stacy, we got a lot of reading to do today. Not a lot. Hmm? Yeah, get your Bible. Here, uh, well, no, I got to control it with this. You, should, you good? Okay. That'll work. That'll work. All right. Praise the Lord. Everybody looking good? It's bright in here. They lifted them things up. Praise the Lord. I kind of like that. Amen. Amen. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Hebrews 6 and 1. Let's deal with that real quick before we jump into this to this message. Well, this ain't necessarily a message. This is just an a, this e equipping. How about that? Amen. This is an e equip, equipping. Hebrews 6 and 1. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's okay. Appreciate it. Let me I'll sit on this side right here for me. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hebrews 6 and 1. What is that? What in the NLT version? Uh, yeah, we can work it out over there. So let us stop going over the basic teachings in Christ again. About Christ. Hold on. Let us. Stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Stop. Mm. My God. Woo. He said, stop teaching the people of God kindergarten principles. Yeah. You know, in the body of Christ, a lot of times, <clears throat> There's no room for progression or there's no understanding for progression. See, let me test y'all out. Uh, what comes after kindergarten? First grade. All right. Uh, what, who said that? Come on now. I know that's right. And then what comes after sixth grade? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Oh, I like it. I like it. How about uh, what comes after... Eighth grade. Ninth grade, high school or ninth grade, high school. What comes after high school? College, College. College. or trade school. Huh? <laughs> or trade school. Yeah. What comes after college? Life. Yeah, life. You can't keep on going to school. You got to start living it. Hallelujah. See, because because. 
we, we, we're, we're intimidated, afraid, or just ignorant to the fact that God requires for us to grow. We stay in the elementary teaching. If you're never challenged where your faith is concerned, you'll actually embrace elementary teaching. You'll fight against anything that challenges you to study the scripture, to show yourself approved, to be thoroughly furnished under every good work. You'll fight against it because I want that old time religion. <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with that because a lot of us, uh, they, they were um, called to hold down um, what but being a believer was for a certain season. That's true. So we don't, we don't discount them, but at the same time, it's amazing that it's scriptural for us to grow beyond basic teachings. He says, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us do what? Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Mm, Isn't that something? That means that that you can't sit around here and just be a baby baby Christian all your walk. Right. It's actually an indicator that there's a high level of rebellion or disobedience if you stay immature in your faith. You know, I would quit going to church if if everything was the same as as from the the day I got saved. Matter of fact, if you've been coming to this church for... If you've been coming to this church for three months yeah. and you don't see any growth, any, any, any type of strengthening in your faith or anything, you need to leave this church. Exactly. This ain't the place for you. Right. You ought to do a three-month assessment of the places where you go to. Are you growing in these places? That, yeah. Is there any room to grow? Mm-hmm. I've seen churches go back because they refuse to grow. Because they refuse to go to grow, they just go into liturgy. Yep. Start celebrating Ash Wednesday and Monday, Thursday, and what is it, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all that kind of stuff. Ash, well, you know, all this. They actually go back to basic elementary teachings or they run to Catholicism. Yeah. I ain't against Catholics, but at the same time, what is the Holy Spirit saying today? That's what I'm more concerned about. Right. Because you got a lot of churches that if you pulled away the, the Catholic elements out of the church, we wouldn't know who we are because we don't study the scriptures. My God. Yeah. A lot of people run away when they don't see a robe. Mm. Yeah. That's true. Uh-huh. That's the truth. A lot of people waiting on church to open up so they can confess their sins to the Father uh, and, and get some type of, you know, uh, what, uh, you know what I mean? You get you one of them and you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Instead of looking to the scripture, you know, God requires that all of us grow, yeah. that all of us upgrade. Yes, he, does. he really does. So he said, let us go again and become mature in our understanding. Say mature. mature. Uh-huh. Surely. Surely we don't need to start again. Man, I know. Come on now. We got to start again. <laughs> Do we got to start over with you? I mean, like, seriously, come on now. If you don't know where Genesis is at in the Bible, then we'll go on and baptize you again. But I mean, my God, you ever crack one open? <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. Come on with it. Surely we don't need to start again. With what? The fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds. To, that sin don't work. Stop sinning. How many times you need to hear somebody stop, tell you stop sinning? Do I got to stand up on top of this with pristine balance in order for you to stop <laughs> sinning? I mean, at what point do you need? What, what level of prophecy do you need? Well, who, who need what, global, what global leader do you need to, to, co- uh, to emerge to make you just stop sinning? To know sin ain't good and to stop it. Right. This, the Bible is dealing with this. Yeah. He, said, he said from the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds. And what else? And placing your faith in him. Oh my God, why you got your faith in you? You're limited. He's unlimited. Your faith is limited because it's in you or it's in something that will eventually fail. Put your faith in God. Go ahead. You don't need further instruction about baptism. Hold on. This, ain't, this can't be the Bible. This is impossible. The Bible don't talk like this. The Bible be like, brother, thank you for coming to this church. We got coffee in the back. And um, if you don't take coffee, we got decaf and we got biodegradable cups. <laughs> 
I would think that he's kind, he, 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 he mildly snapping right now. Yeah, I don't see the brother. Uh, I, I don't see that. He said, you don't need the, fur the further instructions about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And so if God willing, we will do what? We will move forward. Whew, look at your neighbor say, move forward. Move look forward. at your other neighbor say, move forward. Move forward. Yeah, touch them, push them, move forward. Move forward. Come on, leave, leave that old stuff behind. It's time to move forward. Move forward. Let us, if God, let us, if God will, let us move forward. To further understanding. Whew. Let's move forward to further understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I want to talk to you today is about dominion. Pull that up for me, Troy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me one more. It's coming. Dominion. There it is, dominion. You are called, anointed, and placed on this earth for dominion's sake. You're not here for no YouTube channel. You're not here to get the new Jordans. You're here for dominion's sake. That's why you're here. There's, you're, you're always, until you, walk in domin, in, until you walk in dominion, experience an internal conflict within yourself. Nobody has to place it there for you. That's true. You were created to walk in dominion on the earth. That's exactly right. Before you were anointed, before you were called, before you, all dominion is not governed by the fivefold ministry gifts. They're important, but they are not the, they are not the defining factor on whether or not you walk in dominion. Yeah. yeah, that's true. People who walk in dominion are people who embrace their, their calling. And what's amazing is, is that a lot of people who walk in it are not believers. He said the sons of this world are yet wiser than the sons of God. Everybody got one head, two arms, two legs, one heart beating, pair of lungs, kidneys. What make you think that somebody else is better than you? You know how many times I done went to church and people like, boy, if I knew Oprah Winfrey, I would tell her. So what you know, Oprah? What Oprah got that you ain't got? Right. What are all these, these figureheads that every year I've, I've gotten to be old enough to where I see it's always some emerging figurehead that people want you to put your emphasis on to defer your dominion over to them. Yeah. Oh, if I was if I was Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or somebody like that. And then we even take their principles and try to integrate them to the church. We got the word of God. They take our principles. We take theirs. Yeah. And they walk in dominion. Ask yourself, what do they have that you don't have? See, is your past, your, your dysfunctional past, your, your mama wasn't there, your daddy wasn't there, you know, uh, I'm too tall, too short, too fat, too, too uh, is all that robbing you of your dominion? Mm -hmm. Your self-estimation? Yeah, that's it. That's how another person, how, how another person who you gave credibility told you what you weren't. Yeah, come on now. They didn't love you right. They didn't do, they didn't get, they didn't pay me no attention. They won't let me preach. <laughs> All right. Who has ownership on your dominion right now? Yeah, that's good. Who'd you give it? Because you had to have given it. Right. To somebody. God was clear in making sure that we knew through his word, through something that was unchangeable, that it was the purpose and plan of God for us to walk in dominion. Genesis 1, 26 says what? And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And Who made man? And God. I just want you to be clear on that because you got to watch. You have to watch people. Just because somebody provides an answer for something does not mean that they are right. Just because there's documentation on something does not mean that the documentation is right. You have to, you have to embrace that, understand that before you, you, before you loan your attention and your belief system over to something. Because a lot of people, just because something is written, they believe it. Sometimes you got to check the author. Yeah. 
Yeah. Before you submit to the information. That's good. Because there's a lot of unbelievers and skeptics that are giving an answer. They can give you a comprehensive answer, but it's not rooted in truth. Yeah. Oh my God. That's why a lot of people f focusing on their ancestors right now. Because they take interpreted hieroglyphics by a European, not even a non-Egyptian, and say, well, this is the, we was the original, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I understand. But at the end of the day, just because you can articulate on a point does not give you validity. That's true. You talk all you want to. God said, let us do what? Make man in our image, uh -huh. after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. He said... Let them have dominion over what? The fish of the sea and uh -huh. the fowl of the air. Stop. He said, I want you to have dominion over what? The fish of the sea. Uh-huh. That's one realm. Say one realm. One realm. What's the next one? And over the fowl of the air. That's another realm. And over the cattle. And over the cattle. That's another realm. The cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The last one is, is, is a culmination of, of the last realm. Mm -hmm. Your dominion is in three realms. Yeah. Your dominion is in three aspects. Your dominion is over what God created in three different realms. Mm -hmm. Those three different realms constitute how you walk in dominion. That's good. That's really if you don't understand what you have authority over, then you don't walk at the optimal level. You don't have dominion in my house. Right. But you got dominion in your house. Right. My oldest son, he got his own apartment and um and um you know, we was happy to see his apartment and everything and 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 I went over to his house with a met, with a, with with a spirit of just just respect for his house. I didn't walk in there like, I'm your daddy, and this is, you know. <laughs> nah, this is your house. Right. You want me to take my shoes off? I'll take my shoes off. You, you know, keep your shoes on, whatever. However you do it in your house. I can respect the authority that you have in your house. Amen. I don't use parental rights to govern in places that I don't have authority. Come on. Come on. That's good. You have to allow me yes. authority in your place, because you're grown. Yes. You're good and grown. If it's something I don't like in your authority, then I can go back to my authority. <laughs> but at this point, you know, we can agree to agree. Three realms. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. No room in between. Created he them, and God blessed them, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So we want to deal with one realm of your dominion. Next one. marine kingdom fish of the sea God said Adam I need you to have dominion over this realm see he said he blessed them and God said to them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea what was God saying to Adam when he said have dominion over the fish of the sea. He was saying to him, he was saying to him that there are three aspects, three elements, three realms that I've created. There are three, there, there are three elements that, that I have created. The, 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 the fish in the sea are governed by water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look at the, you look out over the water, the water, the water is, 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 is an entire kingdom yeah. under the surface. Yeah. They said the water is, they said the highest mountain is not higher than the ocean is deep. Yeah. All right. He said over the fowls of the air, we're going to deal with the fowls of the air, but there's a whole spiritual realm that is just in the air. That's the truth. 
That's why satellites and, and, and prints and power of the air. That's why there's all this transmission going on in the air. That's why everything trying to track you. Yeah. yeah. Know where you at. Yeah. I need to know where you at. Yeah. I want to need I want to know where you at and what you looking at. So I can influence you and sell you something. The things on the earth are things pertaining to what we see in the physical. See, there's everything starts in the spirit. There's a spiritual realm that is unseen. Everything starts in the spirit, meaning that whenever whenever God speaks, something happens. Whenever there is an element or some life in the element, God is involved in it because it starts in the spirit. In the spirit, there are there, there is God who governs all of it. But then there are demonic spirits that attempt to influence what God created. That's the marine kingdom. God was sure to tell Adam, which we are, we are the, we are the seed of the woman. Yeah. We're the seed of the woman. What are we? We are, we are when, when the two came together and, and God created Eve and gave her and, and made Eve and gave her a womb, then she created, she, she birthed a man. Right. And so that was how mankind was started through the birthing process after God created all men and women. Now, what happened with Eve in the garden when she sinned, Adam sinned, caused both of them to receive a curse and get kicked out of the garden. Now, each one of them had a promise that was made to them regardless of their mess up. It wasn't for the sake of messing up, Come on. but God being wise, God being sovereign, God being omnipresent, omnipresent, omniscient. God was wise enough to know, not only do I know you're going to mess up, but I'll put some provision in place for you. God is wise enough to know that him put, people say this, how is uh, Adam and... Uh, how, how God going to put Adam and Eve in the garden knowing that the devil was there? Why would he test them like that? Well, he wasn't testing Adam and Eve. He was testing the devil. Just like your, just like your adversaries are being tested. You think it's about your test and it ain't about your test. It's about it's about your it's about every principality that's fighting against you. It's about why, why was it so easy for you to get free from addiction? Why was it so easy for you to stop smoking? Why was it so easy for you to, for you to come out of that dysfunction? Why, why, why is it that in one word he's able to deliver you out of any condition? Because he's proving something to your enemy. He's proving to your enemy that you can't do nothing with him that I don't let you do. Your ability to offset something is not greater than my ability to change it and to and to cause him to to crush your head while you try to bite his heel. So in the marine kingdom, God has given dominion. There are three manifestations of the marine kingdom. The marine kingdom has three manifestations to help you understand it. We are, we are called, God have not changed his promise where we are concerned. We are called, we are anointed, we have grace and authority to dismantle the kingdom of, uh, to dismantle the marine kingdom. All right? So there are three manifestations of the marine kingdom. The marine kingdom ain't just a fish in the water. Yeah. Let me help you with that. All right, the first one is what? Hold on, don't leave, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. don't leave that over to them. Uh-uh, not right now. Uh-uh, not right now. We are, we, we, we're in the flow of the anointing right now. Y'all got to find another day to practice. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. What's the next one? Movement. There you go. The first manifestation in the marine kingdom is the spirit of pride. The Bible says humility comes before honor, but pride comes before a fall. Yes. Pride, is, pride is, is Leviathan. Pride is the spirit that's lurking in the marine kingdom. You know, in the ocean, 
After about 3,000 feet, I ain't no oceanographer, but about 3,000 feet, based upon my Google searches, um, light stops. There's no light beyond about 3,000, 4,000 feet. Everything, it does, not, it, it does not mean that life doesn't exist. It just means that after a certain point, light stops. Pitch black down there. Pride is a spirit that lurks in the deep. Pride is a spirit that manifests. It, it, you would think that, a per, uh, that pride does not manifest because you see a person in their natural state. You see them on the surface. So on the surface, they don't look prideful. But it's not until you dig a little bit deeper. Well, Jesus. Pride has a way, pride has a way of laying dormant until the right time to emerge. Yeah. It's not until. See, because pride, every, everything in the marine kingdom, wait, see, I'm giving you similitudes to open up your spiritual understanding because I'm talking, I'm giving an example by one thing, but I'm talking about another. Yeah. So there is, the spirit of pride is something that waits at the bottom. It waits while it's undetected. It waits until the opportune time to strike. It waits till you're not paying attention. Yeah. It wait, it, it, it wait until, until you're not, it, 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 it watches until you, until you stop guarding your heart. Hmm. It, pride wait until you, it's, it's, it waits until you start getting loose with your words. Until you start developing a familiar spirit. At one time, y'all love one another. You just lovey-dovey. You're so sensitive to one another. But then a familiar spirit creep in. Mm -hmm. You'll say anything to one. See, pride just wait until you yeah. start being, you stop being sensitive. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. Pride is a spirit. Yeah. It's a marine demon. You look in the Bible, you're not going to find the word marine demon. It's a description for something that is working, that is active, and that is happening right now in real time. It's a spirit of pride. Pride is always lurking. Pride will let you serve until you come into your own. Then start coming, then start becoming prideful. You take instruction. You know how, let me show you how Leviathan show up. Let's say you got a kid. They've been up under their mama, mama and daddy from day one. Grow up, go through high school. Then they get to college. They get sent off to college. And then they begin to exhibit behavior contrary to how their parents taught them. How did, you, how did you become goth when you was raised in a Christian home? How you emo, but you, went to, but you was raised in church? Because there's a spirit of pride that wrote. It just waited to wait. see you, were, you only did good when you were under discipline. You, your, your, your life was optimized when you were under discipline. Now you're a drug addict when you when you by yourself. My God. My God. Come on. <laughs> It's a spirit of pride. It's it just, it just sitting down there waiting. Come on. <laughs> waiting for you to slip. That's the truth. Because <laughs> you ain't paying attention. The spirit of pride waits for you to start compromising. It waits for you to just get loose where your belief system is concerned. Pride rises up. Pride, pride manifests in people who don't give God glory for the goodness in their life. God is good, but I did that. I mean, it was a rapper did that. Got up there in front of the thing. He said, look, man, I'm thankful for me. I said, he right. Because God didn't do it. Thank you for being honest. Finally, because all the rest of them before you was lying on Jesus. Look at Isaiah 27. In that day, the Lord with his sword and great, yeah, with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. The piercing serpent, Leviathan. Even Leviathan what? 
the crooked serpent, uh-huh. and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. That's why when the scripture says humility come before honor, but pride come before a fall, Proverbs 11 and 2 said, when pride comes, then comes shame. Yeah. But with the lowly is wisdom. Whenever you start walking prideful, you're going to get knocked down. Yep. Hard. You ain't doing nothing. You're just you're setting yourself up for embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You go, you're going to have to, you sticking your foot in your mouth right now because it, it's, it's better just to be humble. Don't, don't try to, don't try to win. Don't try, don't try to be on top. Just be humble. Stay humble. Let God prosper you. Let him, let him array you as he sees fit, but stay humble. That, that spirit of Leviathan, that, that marine demon is in people to such a degree that, that the, that the, that the retail market is saturated with marine demons. What do I mean by that? Whenever you put the emphasis on a piece of clothing, and that piece of clothing, once you get it, your identity switches. You get the bag and you become another person? Yeah. 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 That's good. Can't nobody tell me, I got this bag. It's like, you know you're the same jerk with a bag now. You're just a jerk with a bag. You're just a jerk with a bag. That's how, look, that's how I was back in the day. Man, look, I, I, everybody you know the story about my raccoon hat, but I'm telling you, back in the early 80s, I said, man, if I get this raccoon hat, I'm there. I have a ride. I said, if I get this, I said, I'm going to get one with the tail, and then I'm going to bring, bring that tail over to the left a little bit and put a roach clip in it. I really did. I said, listen, when I get this raccoon hat, they ain't going to know what to do. They, I don't even know who they is, but they ain't going to know what to do. People sell it. Merchandisers are selling pride. Yeah, yeah. You walk in character, integrity. Matter of fact, you adorn yourself modestly. Yeah. But a spirit of harlotry, harlotry gallivants in front of you yeah. and says, "This is God's blessing, not your modesty." My God. It's a marine. See, it's just lurking under the. It's, yeah. just, it's, just, it's just lurking under the spirit. Yeah. And then you, you, you take your, you take God, which is value, modesty is valuable to God. And you put that away yeah. for the look of a harlot. Come on, my God. It's a marine demon. It's up under the surface. You can't see it when you look. Oh, it just looks. You ever seen the ocean? It just looks beautiful. But up under there, you, be, you better not get in that water. It's something that'll snatch your leg off. <laughs> You'll get back to the shore without that leg. And it ain't a clean break neither. It's a rip. It's a marine demon. Say marine demon. marine demon. Look at Proverbs 20 and 5. Counsel. Counsel. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Counsel in the heart of a man. You know, you know that the earth is 70% water, that you are mostly water. Yeah. 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 Apart from, apart from... The only thing in you that's useful to God is your soul and your blood. The rest of them are subject to the flesh at any given moment. Your spirit belongs to God. Amen. But the water, the water is where the, the water is the platform for the attack in your flesh. In you. He said, counseling the heart of man is like deep water. Meaning that, what, meaning that your counsel operates the same way that Leviathan does. See, how were you counseled in your life? Because if that counsel in you has, has gotten deep enough in you, then it'll affect your belief system. It'll affect your comprehension for the word of God, for the things of God. How is it that God can do this? How is it Jesus can die and then come back again? Why you got to pray in somebody else's name to get to God? You know why? Because the, deep down in you, there, there's, some, there's, some, there's some contrary counsel in you come on. that's fighting against it. These are the people that come to church for, for, social, for social reasons. Yeah. 
You come to church to fulfill your religious duty for the week. He said that counsel on the inside. What, what, what is counseling you? What has your ear greater than the word of God? I guarantee that it's something that is embedded in you deeply. Yeah. It had, the Bible says, but a man of understanding will draw it out. There has to be an anointing of grace to draw out something. Listen, the spirit of insecurity, the spirit of inferiority is, is a marine demon. Because people can tell you, you beautiful. God created you. No, I ain't nothing. I'm a worm. I'm a wretch. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not. A, I, I. Come on. How, how dare you lowly esteem something that God created? Yeah. How dare you? How dare you weaponize your, your insecurity where nobody can build you up now? Come on. Your life ain't your own. If God say you fearfully and wonderfully made, then that's what it is. People take depression and sovereignize depression. Yeah. Why? Because it's a marine demon. You're fighting a demon, but you think it's you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on now. It's just deep, it's deeply embedded. Yeah. It's just waiting in the water. Waiting, waiting. Uh, the counsel that you received. Mm. See, who, 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 anybody speaking into your life who cannot line it up. You gotta have two filters. Anybody speaking in your life and it does not line up with two things, two, you should have two filters. If it don't line up with these two things, it ain't God. Come on, man. Come on. If it don't line up with the word of God and the spirit of God, it's not God. I don't care, I don't care, how, I don't, I don't care what you said. Somebody tried to tell me, they said, Pastor Devon, you can, um, I got these things, you can, what they say, you can sell uh, insurance to help people fix their credit. They did. They said, Apostle, we have a business, you can sell to fix your credit. I said, but I'm not anointed to sell. Exactly. You can believe that. I, I'm not anointed. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have an anointing on my life for selling things. Yeah. So just because you have figured out how to make money in that area don't mean that that's, that's relevant to what God has called me to do. Yeah. I'm a truck guy. Yeah. Yeah. I do all things pertaining to trucks. Yeah. <laughs> you got some trucky, then I'm with you. <laughs> See, I'm a truck. I'm a truck person. You know what I mean? But people try to put. See, if there's a spirit of greed lying dormant in you, they'll present something to you that's not within your call. They're not. They're not speaking to your destiny. They're speaking to your greed. You know, everybody can't be Solomon, right? Right. Somebody who was talking about Solomon? Yeah. Solomon is a blessing, but everybody can't be Solomon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we kind of got, there's, there's a threshold for everybody's, there, there is a threshold, there is a measure for everybody's level of increase in prosperity. What prosperity truly is, is the absence of lack. Yeah. And that, yeah. the spectrum of that goes in a lot of different yeah. directions. I was watching something about some people, uh, they way off in the jungles or whatever, and I was watching these people, and I was looking at that, I said, man, they living better than us. Straight up. I'm talking about they with the grass, with the, in yeah. the, <laughs> but I'm like, they living better than us. I said, because, because they got purity. They got something we don't have. We in a rat race. We got we got to add things into the church that's not that, that's that's not necessarily relevant to the to, to God's will. People have to people have to, to people have to lead you on and bait you about money and things like that. Everything got to be God gonna prosper you. God gonna prosper God and God gonna prosper you. But that ain't, but that ain't the reason why you relate to a father. Right. Come on, apostle. I'll. I'll, I'll when I wasn't raised, at the time when I wasn't raised by my father, I didn't know my father until I was about 13. I didn't want to have a relationship with my father so he could prosper me. I wanted to know him. He was the big deal. He was the reason. I wanted to be around him. I wanted to learn about him. I wanted to hear about what he did when he went to school. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, when you're talking to it, sometimes you can misrepresent a, a father by, by, by pumping the wrong agenda, by, by giving people the wrong motive in how to relate to him. 
Yeah. Anybody who was raised without their father say, man, forget the money. Yeah. He, he could be broke. It's him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. He said counsel is, is in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will do what? So one realm of the marine, marine kingdom is pride. Say pride. pride. The next realm of the marine kingdom is Conspiracies and dark counsels. Say conspiracies and dark counsels. It's a tongue twister. Conspiracies and dark counsel. Remember, I said that the ocean, after a certain depth, no more light. This is the place where con- conspiracies and dark counsel happens. Look at 1 Corinthians 4 and 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until uh-huh. the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Oh, I thought the Lord just going to get this back. Uh-uh. 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 Hold on, baby. Uh-uh. 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 No, he revealing to you hidden things of darkness that's happened that you need to know about. They're like, go ahead. They're like, what do he say after church? I don't even know. I feel good till it wear off. He said, who both will do what? Will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. He will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. And what? And will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The manifestations of the marine kingdom are pride and dark counsel and conspiracies. When I'm talking about conspiracies, I'm not talking about conspiracy theorists and they hiding a a, a, a UFO in Area 51. That ain't what I'm talking about. Conspiracies are plans and plots that are designed to control or to remove you from your faith in God. There are strategies that are made for certain races. There are strategies that are made for certain age groups. There are strategies and conspiracies that are against families. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand dark counsel and conspiracies, then you'll think that the current trend or what is most popular is just the way that it is. There is a dark conspiracy against family. That's why you have one in every every four homes is raised with a father. It has a father raising a child. That there's a whole plan against, oh my God. Okay, you want to, what you want me to preach? Um, uh, uh, Moses uh, split the water with the red, what you want? You want to fish in the 5,000? How many times you want to go with Adam and the, and the thing, and eat, eat the apple, and then you color the book and we'll make, the, make, the, make, the, make the leaf green and then color the apple red? That's what you're looking for? We need the meat. Come on, we need it. He said, Until the Lord come, who both will bring light, bring to light the hidden things of darkness. There are conspiracies in dark counsel against godly the things that God has created. Yeah, yeah. Why do you why do you why do you think young people are manifesting rebellious rebellion at a very high level? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think just because they just rebellious? No. It's because it's something working working to get them to that place. Why do you think people are wrestling with they with their biology? Yeah. 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 And then and then every, and then everywhere you look on on uh, uh, television or some uh, I remember when our kids was watching Nickelodeon and everything. I said, man, why they keep showing people butt on everything? Yeah. Why is everything centered around a butt? <laughs> you you know why? Because because they're trying to they're trying to burn an image in the mind of uh, of impressionable young people. Yeah. 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 Put your focus here. Read it again, five. Therefore judge nothing before the time uh-huh. the Lord come, who both will bring the light, excuse me, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of God. Uh-huh, every man that have praise of God. Give me Ezekiel twenty-two, twenty-three. 
And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, saith unto her. Now this is God's prophet giving, giving, this is God giving his prophet revelation on a conspiracy. Where is it at? Son of man, say unto her. Thou art the land that is not cleansed uh -huh. or rained upon in the day of indignation. Uh -huh. Therefore, excuse me, there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. He said, wait a minute. It's a conspiracy in the prophets? What, what does that mean? So, well, if you was anything like me, I, before I got saved, I wasn't raised in the church. Before I got saved, I ain't going to church, man. They all about money. That's all they're doing it for is money. Not knowing that God was going to save me and reveal to me a conspiracy against the body of Christ. You know how many people ask me, we, we, we experience miracle signs and wonders here on a regular basis. And you know how many people, the first time that they, they encounter me, they ask me, how many people in your church? Because they, cause they sizing me up with that, thinking I don't recognize a marine demon working to see if I got a spirit of greed. So if I give up the number to you, then you can, you can determine what level of anointing you're going to walk in to try to deceive me. My God. Jesus. What you asking me the number for? What does it matter? People getting saved, baptized. You, you got to be kidding People getting filled with the Holy Ghost. People getting delivered from sickness. It's a conspiracy. How much money can I make off of you? I know I won't tell you to talk about. See, I'm all right with it because people tell me don't talk about stuff like this. Because people ain't going to give. I said, I ain't in it for people giving. Exactly. You <laughs> I run a business. I'm all right. Do what you do. Yeah. Right. Look, look. If y'all don't, if y'all don't sow, me and my wife, we got it. You can believe that. <laughs> we hold it down. <laughs> I promise you. You, you, you conspiracies in the prophetic are people who are trying to, who are trying to use a level of influence or or, or charismatic witchcraft to influence you and prophesy money out your pocket. He's telling Ezekiel, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy, where is it at? Of her prophets in the midst of you. Like a, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls and have taken the treasure and precious things. How everybody, how everybody, somebody's spiritual mama and daddy all of a sudden out the blue. Yeah. Right. Come on. It, it's to the place that people would violate what a, what a parent and a child is. Yeah. Yeah. For the sake of an entourage, for the sake of membership. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's trending. Yeah. I told my, me and my wife, we talk about this all the time. I said, I, I said, look, if God tell me I'm somebody's spiritual father, somebody's spiritual. I said, do you know what it would mean for, for God to tell a girl that I was her spiritual father. Yeah. That means that she would have access to me like my biological daughter would. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That means that the, that, that the proximity, that all of that, I mean, we just was talking about this. I dare not ever play with that. No, 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 I'm just a apostle. Unless God reveals something different, I'm just a apostle. I, I do all of my work just being an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am all right with that. Because if God charges me to be somebody's spiritual father, Amen. You, you're dealing with dangerous territory if you don't have a grace for that. You have to have a grace for that. You have to be called by God because, because now you are bloodline switching. You are actually integrated into a bloodline so they have access to your wisdom, your mental, and your inheritance. That's exactly yes. right. That's exactly they don't sow into you no more. That's right. Do your kids, do you, you got kids? Your kids sow into you to get your anointing? No, okay, look, she looked at me like, that's crazy. Of course it's crazy. <laughs> Why you accept it, though? Because you don't see the marine demon working the conspiracy. Yeah. 
It's about your resources. It's about your attendance. Yeah. Come on. <sighs> we got to go back over Hebrews 6 and 1 again. <laughs> if you want 20, give me 25. What did it say? Well, hold on. Like, like roaring lion, raven in the prey, they have devoured souls and they have taken the treasure of precious things. They have, they, they squandered inheritances. They were so ravening means that you have an insatiable hunger. You ever had, look, you ever had somebody who can't, anything, anything that you give them, they take. As a, as a believer, you can't be like that. Right. Yeah. Teach the feature. Certain stuff got hooks in it. Yeah. King Richard. <laughs> it do, though. Certain stuff you can't take. That's the truth. Because, you comp- because, you, because if you take everything, you make, it think, you make people think that it's all about, it's all about uh, giving stuff, getting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Make you think that's all it's about. How many people are, anybody who is supposed to be your leader would be at least wise enough if they have God's heart. He said, I've seen you pastors after my own heart. God's pastors, God's leaders would not allow you to squander your resources. Because they would have to be mindful that you, part of your, part of your finances is to leave a portion to, an inheritance to your children's children. That's yeah. right. So if all of your resources come here, if I put all of your resources on my back, where does it leave your children? Right. Where every other rebellious child is who hate the church. Yeah. Teach. Leave them in the same place. Why you hate church? Because we was broke. We was poor and we was sowing. Yeah. Teach the people. <sighs> is it not true? Yes, it's true. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yes, sir. You can you can you can you can go all out for the for the for the pastor, but your kids you won't even take your kids to McDonald's. Well, you giving them the third degree, but I get the big piece of chicken. How that supposed to work? <laughs> it's a marine spirit. It's a demon lurking. You don't honor your spouse more than you honor your leader. It's something behind that yeah. Yeah. that we don't see. We can't see it in your outfit. We can't see it in your service. You always at door, hey, welcome, welcome to Without Limits Christian Center. Welcome to Without Limits Christian Center. But then your husband come in, you don't even say nothing to him. It's a whole demonic network. It's a whole demonic kingdom. If you don't deal with it, if you don't shine no light on it, it'll stay the way it is. He said they take the treasure of precious things. They have made many widows in the midst thereof. Yeah. That's the church full of women. Everybody want to be married. You can, get, you can get gold dust. You can get the sky to crack. You can get an increase, breakthrough, the breakers, shaking, anointing, but you can't get married. Yeah. Yeah. How can you get all, how you can get all of that spiritual movement yeah. but want to be married and can't? I submit to you that there's an incantation that's been made over you and all of that, and all of that quote unquote ministry yeah. that's got you limited in your perspective and your view. Yeah. So you, here's how you tell a marine demon has been imparted into a woman who wants to be married because her, 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 expectation, her expectation for a man is unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who got a real marriage in here know that marriages are built. It's give and take. You don't stop. How many, how many women started where their husband was, was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and perfect? Yeah, y'all was two jerks working it out till God got a hold of y'all. <laughs> he was a player, and you was, uh, you was trying to win the bump contest in the club. He saw you doing the bump, and you hooked up. <laughs> You know, the, you know the bump. You know, married the bump queen and then wonder why you're struggling in marriage. You need God. Oh. 
The next manifestation of the. Yeah. Of the Marine Kingdom is Legion. Legion. Legion is the demon. It's a demonic spirit that groups together and makes net make um, it makes a network. It's um it's where it's what they call uh, demonic groupings. Insecurity and inferiority and timidity and cowardice and they all working together on you. You know, you're fearful. You're afraid. God say, declare bold, cry aloud, and spare not. But you, but you, but you sovereignize your own personality, and you just hold back. I'm gonna just say, it. I'm gonna just say it my way. You know, my thing is, you know, that's, 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 yeah, I know. Well, see, my thing. Well, well, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believes will have everlasting life. But my thing is, hold on, why are you adding something to that? That been working. Why you got some extra? Why why you got why you got a commentary on everything? Legion is a network of demons. Look at Mark five ten. It says, and he besought him. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. This is Jesus dealing with the man who was demonized. Go ahead. Now there was there nine into the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Uh huh. Jesus cast out the devil that was in the man. He had a, a legion of demons in him. Then the demons offer a suggestion on how they get caught, cast out. Yeah. <laughs> What, listen, what the demons are saying is what they prefer. Right. Uh-huh. My God. Right, that's good. Wow. <clears throat> that's good. They're telling Jesus their preference. That's good. Cast us into the pigs, and what's going to happen? Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Uh-huh. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Ran violently? Soon as the demons filled the pigs, the pigs ran violently, aggressively, with all their speed into the water. Yeah. Mm. That's right. They preferred the water. Yeah. Why do they prefer the water? Because Jesus said when the spirit goes out, he goes into dry places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that made marine demons, water spirits, don't like being in dry places. Yeah. Right. He said it goes out in the dry places and then it goes, tries to go back into his house. Why? Because moisture constitutes life. Yeah. That's why they're trying to go to other planets to find some kind of water to sustain life. Right. So the demons are attracted to life. Wow. In, the, in the water you can find life. Yeah. Yes. He said they ran valiantly down the steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. The demons were choked in the water. Now, let's look at the three witnesses. We got three witnesses against these marine demons. You connect with the three witnesses, they help you to see how to walk in your dominion. Matthew 14, 25. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto You need me to read it? Okay. Okay. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they Stop. Said, when is the fourth watch? It's in the night. Three to six. In the night, and I asked that because I didn't really know. Thank you. <laughs> and Jesus that night went unto them. Walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. They cried out for fear. But Jesus spoke to them and said, Be of good cheer. It's me. Why is Jesus walking on the water? Because it's a nifty trick? No. Why is Jesus out there walking on the water? Because he's just doing it for no reason? Now, let me show you why. Go to Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void. Uh -huh. And the darkness was upon the face of the earth. Uh -huh. oh, excuse, excuse me, on the face of the deep. deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So Jesus, because the Holy Spirit had not been given yet, yeah took the same dominion that the Holy Spirit had in the creation. It says, since the Holy Spirit is not over the waters, I'll walk over the water. It wasn't for trick. It wasn't for a trick. It wasn't for, it wasn't just to do some miracle, just to be proven that, that I can do some miracle. He was showing you your dominion by walking over the water because the Holy Spirit is, is, is a sign to govern over all demonic spirits. That's why you have to stay filled with the Spirit in the house of God because the Spirit is the one that, that holds all demonic spirits at bay. It causes them to regress, to go back into the depths, go back where no more light is. That's why Jesus did not destroy the demons. You say you just go back into the water. Jesus yeah. out there walking on the water to prove, to show the disciple, to show us that your assignment is to continue to walk in the dominion that the Father gave you. Let's see the Father walking on the water. Look at Job 9 and 1. Which, command, which commanded the sun and it rises. Matter of fact, give me, um, hold on, let's go to it. I'll read it, you stay there. Okay. Job. Keep the, uh, what's the name up there, uh, Troy? Job 9 and 1. It said, then Job answered and said, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in his heart and mighty in strength who, who have hardened himself against him that is prospered. He said, you turn against me, I'm against your prosperity. Isn't that interesting? Verse 5 said, which removes the mountains and they know not, which overturn them in anger, which shake the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble. Verse 7, which commands the sun and it rises not and seals up the stars. Verse 8. Which alone spread out the heavens and treaded upon the waves of the sea. So you mean to tell me the Father is walking on the water? That's where the Son got it from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Come on. Listen, Satan tried to come to Jesus like this. If you bow down to me, I give you. He said he showed him all the things, all the, all, every kingdom on the earth. He said, "You bow down to me, I'll give you all of this." Jesus say, "Flee from me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan." Then the disciples out there fishing, trying to make their living off the water. Jesus say, drop your net on the other side. Why did Jesus say, drop your net on the other side? Because he was proving to Satan that he did not control the resources of these kingdoms. Yeah. 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 He said, I'll show you exactly where to drop your net to pull these resources. That those same resources were the ones that started the early church. How were they able to go to Acts 1, Acts 2? Because they were provided for by the fish that Jesus said dropped the, other, the net on the other side of the boat. Jesus said, all power. Say all power. All power. All power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. The power that you walk in, the power that Jesus has given you through him overcoming death, hell, and the grave is part of the dominion that God has called you to walk in. This is a season for discernment. You got to discern what's under the surface. We, we, gone are the day of false smiles, um, etiquette, acting like everything is going all right. People are broken. Yeah. If you don't know your discernment, if you don't know, if you don't know your dominion, you won't use your discernment to see what's behind the surface. Ooh, that's good. That's if good. you are broken, you ought to know at least that it's something going on on the inside of me. See, a competent, qualified leader, somebody who who is filled with the spirit can break a marine demon off of you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. This is the purpose that God has for us to be able to see what's beyond the surface, to be able to see demonic strategies. It is a, there's a demonic strategy against your house. There's a demonic strategy against your business. There's a strategy that says uh, business, uh, the first year that a business starts, it don't make any money. Who, who do you think created that? God? Come on. Yeah. It's a conspiracy. It's a strategy. Yeah. That's why you don't let the enemy keep you from doing what God said. If God said that this is my will for your life, you don't look to your bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, apostle. That's the truth. So as we all stand.
There is a marine kingdom full of marine demons, but we have power and authority over it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everybody, as you're standing, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. You say, Apostle, why are you asking me to lift my hands to the Lord? Lifting your hands to the Lord is a sign of surrender unto him, not me, unto him. Lifting your hands says, Father, I need you. I'm looking to you for my source. You're the source of my life. You are my strength. You're my everything. There's a demonic root behind everything contrary to the word of God coming to pass in your life. I want to make this prophetic declaration over your life. I want to bind that spirit, that marine demon. But here's the thing. I need you to agree with me. I need you to agree with me. These are, these are, these are the things that have been working against you. You run into failure. You got some habits and 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 and, and you got some habits that 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 are withholding prosperity and blessing from you. Some things about you got to change before you make it to that place. There ain't nothing wrong with changing. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, Father, fix what's going on on the inside of me. I don't have time to run out here and go pick it. Picking in with people and, and complaining and running up. I, I don't have I don't have time for all of that. I need you to fix what's on the inside of me. Father, open my eyes so that I can see the conspiracies, the dark counsels that are against me. Who's to say you're supposed to uh, 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 young young girls going having having babies out of wedlock and all that kind of stuff? You know young men in prison saying that you can't be healed that there's no cure for that that there's no healing for that all that is a conspiracy to make you believe it whose report do you believe yes. well we choose to, re to believe the report of God so with every hand lifted heads bowed let's pray Father in Jesus name Father I thank you for these your people Father, I thank you for wisdom, understanding, and insight, Father, into the deeper things of God. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you reveal every marine demon, every spirit lurking under the surface, spirit of pride, conspiracies, even Leviathan, demons that are working together to keep us and hinder us. Some of you are here, the Spirit of God, he said that, that you're, you're the father, you're, you're being the father that you never had. You're being a mother that you never had. Because there was, a, there was a, a conspiracy against you to keep you fearful, to keep you timid, to, to keep you contentious, to keep you argumentative, to keep you in that, in that same place, to, to keep you in the same place where those demons were fighting and, 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 and destroying your parents. You will overcome the things that your parents couldn't overcome. So Father, in Jesus' name, Right now, I break and bind every marine demon. Father, send light into those dark places where insecurity is at, where timidity is at, where fear is at, where pride is at. Shine light, Father, on every area where there is darkness. You said, when light come in, darkness has to flee. Father, I thank you for revelation and insight to the mysteries of God. I thank you, Father, for understanding in those things. Father, I thank you for clarity and simplicity, Father, and understanding, Father, that there is a world underneath the surface and that we have authority over it. Father, I bind every network, every system that is withholding finances, that is withholding opportunities. Father, I ask in Jesus' name, Father, that you that you open doors, Father, that no man can shut, Father. Show a way, Father, when there is no way. Father, bring forth healing, Father, when the, when the, the, to help us against the misdiagnosis and the false reports of those who don't believe in the Most High God and the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I come against every dark counsel now. I come against every demonic grouping and the spirit of pride. Father, expose it, shine light on it, Father. That which is not willing to change, Father, 
burn it and purge it with your fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And with that, Father, we seal it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Prophets, you have a word, prophetic word. Come.